One of the best politicians we have in South Africa is Julius Malema. I have been a big fan of Julius Malema from the ANC Youth League days because he used to be brave, he used to be vocal, and he literally shook up a lot of us as young people. I have to credit him as showing us young people that you should not be afraid to speak up to older people just because they are old. You should not be afraid to stand for what you believe in. In the ANC Youth League, along with many other members, he was raising the point of the Freedom Charter that the ANC once stood for. Nationalization, getting the land back. And he graduated to take that to the Economic Freedom Fighters after they suspended and, and kicked them out of, of the ANC. More importantly, and this is a message to my brother Tutuzani Zuma in his presidential campaign, one of the things that Julius Malima is doing very well today is he holds these press conferences. And what happens at these press conferences is he speaks to the country as if he is the sitting president. Something that Cyril Ramaphosa has really, really struggled to do. Something that Jacob Zuma did quite well in Parliament. In Parliament, Jacob Zuma would speak and he'd allow people to ask him questions and he'd answer those questions. Cyril Ramaphosa really struggles with this and, and behaves like a dictator. You know, he behaves like someone who cannot take questions, who is too good to take questions from journalists and ordinary citizens. Julius Malima doesn't do that. On top of that, he is on the ground. He speaks the lingo of the people of the day. He doesn't try and speak high diction English, you know, and sound like he was educated in a foreign nation somewhere. He uses uh, slang. He uses his own native tongue. He, uh, he uses colloquial language. You know, Quibi. We know what that means. It means you're cracking the whip. He cracks jokes, of course, which is something really brilliant and something that ex-president Jacob Zuma was really amazing at. The charisma, the jokes. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the singing voice. Muisen in close, he does, on the other hand. So my message to Tutuzani Zuma in his presidential campaign, and this is not just to him, but to anyone who is running for a leadership position somewhere, create these platforms where you can speak to the people on a regular basis and take questions, especially on matters that are the most important. Things like load shedding. Can you at least once a month have a one hour, two hour press briefing, invite the media. You can even handpick the media if you wish. Invite the media, invite some key individuals and, and speak from, speak formally, and then also speak off the cuff as a human being because we appreciate that today. And say, look guys, to be fully honest, I know that some of us don't have load shedding, but, in that way, the people get to relate with you on a more personal basis and allow for the questions, engage with the people. Even if the question is hard, you can say, look, it's a really good question. It's a really tough question. What I will do is I will park that question. I will do some research on that. I will go and get an answer for you from my team and from other more knowledgeable people. And what I will do is I will make a video on social media or I will write up a, a report or a response and I will post it on social media to answer you. But really good question. If it's a personal question, you can easily say, look, that's a personal question. I unfortunately would like to not cover that. That makes things so much easier and it allows you to communicate in a more articulate way with the people. But this thing that Cyril did during the hard lockdown, speaking to us in a one direction, what we call family meetings, that's not a family meeting. A family meeting is where your father or your mother, they stand up, they speak and you get to engage. When you're just speaking passively and we can't, or, or rather, when you're speaking, we passively have to engage without being able to speak back. It's kind of disrespectful, especially if you call yourself an African president presiding over a country that has principles like Ubuntu, you know, where we speak about Lekhotas, you know, Indaba, where we, we converse with each other. Cyril Ramaphosa is not a president that does that. And we need to make sure that the leaders that we have are people that can engage. Someone like Chris Papas not only engages the people on the ground, but he even speaks Isizul, which is the language of the majority of the people, in the area where he is leading Mgeni. So that becomes another thing, finding the language of the people without being fake and stiff and trying to be something you're not. If you're not really good at the language of Isizulu, I say, I say, any Afrikaans come brought me and he's me, so a float and the tall, let it go. Speak in the language you're most comfortable with, but make sure that you're trying to appeal to the people. If you cannot appeal to the people, another hack for people that maybe are not too comfortable in a certain language, the churches have done an amazing job where someone preaches in a language and someone translates. 
And then Jesus came down. And then Jesus went up the mountain. And then Jesus went up the mountain. So what you can do is while you're giving a speech, if you're doing it in English, get a translator. Of course, we have people that do sign language. But get a translator, someone that can stand next to you. And while you're speaking in English, whichever crowd you're speaking to, it could be babies, could be Kosa people, could be vendors, could be Sutu, could be Zul. It doesn't matter. Swati people, Debeles. Get someone who, with the majority of the people that while you're speaking, they translate for you in real time, including your jokes, including some of your personal stuff. That will allow people to fully engage. And even when they ask questions, this translator here will be able to translate to you exactly what's being said. And you can then answer it in English or Afrikaans, if you speak Afrikaans, and then they can translate it to the people. That is the country that we should have right now where you're engaging the people. And like I said, from a political perspective, Julius Malima is one of the best, if not the best currently. Of course, we had ex-president Jacob Zuma, who was amazing as well. Find platforms. I used to make these videos on Facebook last year before they started throttling my content. Where for an hour, for 30 minutes to an hour on Facebook, I would go live. I would go live and engage the people on a pressing matter. Andre Tereita has just stepped down a CEO of ESCOM. Tabo Besta apparently is running rampant in the country. Guys, load shedding is now at stage six and we're struggling. And these are some of the thoughts and this is some of the history. And I would have notes and I would read certain articles from Moneyware, Business Tech, Daily Maverick, The Citizen, Mail and Guardian, etc. And if you don't have the answers, you go and research. People would criticize me in those, li in those live videos. They'd say, no, Pen, you're wrong. That's actually not what happened. I'd take the criticism. I'd go back. I'd come in and fix it. Some people would educate myself and the people viewing with some of the read this article. Guys, actually, the real number is whatever. And we all learn together and we build this nation together. We need future leaders who engage the people and who allow the people to engage them. That's how it works. And that's why even in my first video where I was criticizing Tutuzane Zuma's presidential campaign and offering, some, offering him solutions, I was saying, have a social media presence. Make sure that people can engage on social media. Be one with the people. That's where you win, especially if you want to be a leader of the people. If you want to be a leader of something else, business, an elite group, etc., you don't have to do all of that. Just make sure you have a platform for those people. If you want to be a leader in your community, in your city, in your town, make sure that you have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a Twitter profile that engages those people. And when there are issues in your city, in your town, you tell people, look, I've seen some of the roads in this area. This is what's happening. I've seen that people have been complaining. Chris Papas, again, does this brilliantly well. We've seen Gaten McKenzie in the Karoo doing amazing work and engaging with the people and trying to solve their problems on the ground. He wasn't dealing with Durban problems. He wasn't dealing with Cape Town problems. He wasn't dealing with Joburg or Bombela problems. He wasn't dealing with Kwa Kwa, Free State, Kimberley problems. He was dealing with pe problems of the people of the Karoo and he was engaging them directly. That's what a leader does. And that's one of the things that I hope to do Zane Zuma and other people that are running as independents or as other candidates somewhere else. Engage with the people. You've got the internet now. If you can create media briefings, do that. Have press conferences let people come through and engage with the people and people will get used to you being that leader. Cyril Ramaphosa doesn't even do the stuff that Julius does. Julius gets on platforms and he speaks and people listen locally on the continent and internationally as well. Pen you all the black pen. Let's get it.